In today's episode, we delve into the latest updates from Starbase, where preparations for Starship's highly anticipated fifth integrated flight test are in full swing. However, there are reports that FAA licensing delays could potentially push back the mission. Exciting new developments at Starbase, along with a special appearance by Elon Musk, promise to reveal fascinating insights. We also explore SpaceX's ambitious plans to expand Starship operations to Australia, review the FAA's recent report on increasing launch frequency from Starbase, and discuss significant expansion plans for the launch site. SpaceX is gearing up for Starship's fifth integrated flight test, which will feature Ship 30 and Booster 12. Starship 30 recently underwent a full-duration static fire test, with all six engines firing at the Massey's test site for a full five seconds. The upgraded heat shield performed exceptionally well during the test, with no tiles reported as having detached. After this successful test, the spacecraft returned to the production facility to prepare for Flight 5. Currently, teams are focusing on the forward flaps, working to add more heat tiles to areas that sustained significant damage during Flight 4. They are also addressing the hinge gap issue to prevent flap failure during the re-entry phase of Flight 5. Meanwhile, Super Heavy Booster 12, which had completed its static fire testing three weeks ago, is currently inside the Mega Bay, undergoing preparations for Flight 5. The hot stage ring of the booster was recently moved into the Mega Bay and was subsequently installed on the booster. Once the remaining works are completed, both Ship 30 and Booster 12 will be rolled out to the launch site for a full-stack wet dress rehearsal, the final milestone in the flight campaign. The wet dress rehearsal will be followed by the Flight 5 liftoff. Last week, Tesla owners Silicon Valley hosted the X Takeover event for Tesla and SpaceX enthusiasts, which featured a surprise virtual appearance by Elon Musk. During the event, Musk indicated that SpaceX could be ready for the mission within two to three weeks, however, the actual launch date will hinge on the issuance of the FAA license. Recent reports suggest that the licensing for Flight 5 may be delayed as SpaceX is seeking a modified license to include authorization for catching the booster with the tower arms. From a standpoint of when Starship would be ready, it's probably probably is about two or three weeks, but uh, then then depends on when we get the FAA license. So it's probably end of August is my guess earliest, um, and it may go to early September. Just depends on on how fast the FAA grants our license. Musk has estimated a 50% chance of successfully catching the booster on Flight Five, and approximately a 60% chance that the ship's heat shield will survive reentry. I think we've got probably a 50% chance-ish of catching the booster, and then probably probably better than 50%, maybe 60, 70% chance of the ship heat shield remaining intact on this upcoming flight, assuming nothing else goes wrong. At Starbase, teams are working diligently on the tower arms, making necessary upgrades and fixes to ensure a successful booster catch. The original landing rail actuators are being replaced with upgraded versions to enhance the system's reliability. SpaceX recently released an article addressing the sonic booms that will occur during the landing of a super heavy booster. A sonic boom is a loud noise similar to thunder, generated when an object travels faster than the speed of sound. This phenomenon occurs because the object creates a pressure wave in the air, which moves outward and reaches the ground, causing a sudden change in air pressure. This pressure change, although brief and usually harmless, can be startling. SpaceX explains that data gathered from Flight 4 in June indicates that the sonic booms generated by the Super Heavy booster will be more powerful than those from their Falcon rockets due to the size and speed of the booster. However, they ensure that these booms will primarily affect the area directly beneath the vehicle's flight path and landing site. The company emphasizes that safety measures are in place and the area around the launch pad is cleared and designed to handle the intense conditions of both launches and landings. The construction of the second launch tower is advancing rapidly at the launch site. The fifth section of the tower was stacked atop the fourth section on Thursday morning. The sixth section is staged nearby, ready to be integrated into the tower in the coming days. The remaining three sections are currently being prepared at the Sanchez site and are expected to be rolled out to the launch site soon. According to an FAA document, SpaceX aims to complete the stacking of Tower 2 by mid-August, which, based on current developments, is expected to occur before the fifth flight test. Subsequently, installation of the tower arms, ship quick disconnect mechanism, and other critical components will follow. The tower arms and the carriage are being prepared at the Sanchez site, although there are no updates yet on the status of the Starship quick disconnect arm. The quick disconnect on Tower 1 was damaged during previous integrated flight tests due to insufficient retraction speed to avoid booster engine exhaust. 
SpaceX plans to upgrade the quick disconnect on Tower 2 to enhance retraction speed and may add shielding for protection from the lifting rocket. The Pad 2 flame trench construction is also progressing swiftly in parallel to the tower construction. Interlocking sheet piles are currently being driven into the soil to form a wall for constructing the trench. This launch site rendering from the space engineer provides a visual representation of the flame trench's location and its potential design. As discussed in previous episodes, SpaceX is seeking FAA approval to increase the number of Starship launches from Starbase to 25 annually, including ship and booster landing operations. The company is also requesting permission for up to 90 seconds of daytime Starship static fire tests and 70 seconds of daytime super heavy static fire tests annually. The federal agency last week released a 154-page draft tiered environmental assessment addressing these plans and additional proposals. The FAA's draft report indicates that SpaceX's plans to ramp up Starship launches from Starbase are consistent with previous environmental studies of the site. The agency found that no significant environmental changes have occurred since the 2022 assessment, which evaluated the impact of Starship operations on the environment, wildlife, and local communities. This positive preliminary finding suggests that the FAA may approve SpaceX's request to expand its launch activities. The public comment period is currently open and will close on August 29, after which the FAA will prepare a final environmental assessment and make a formal decision. The FAA draft report document also includes a layout of the proposed Starbase launch site expansion plans. The tank farm will be further expanded to accommodate the needs of Pad 2, and dedicated water storage tanks will be installed for the flame trench operations at Pad 2. Additionally, an air separation unit will be constructed near Pad 2 to produce liquid oxygen and liquid nitrogen on site. This graphic overlay of the site expansion map on satellite imagery provides a visual representation of these planned changes and future developments. Regarding operational specifics, the FAA report notes that during a super heavy landing, the deluge system will be activated for about 30 seconds, though no deluge activation is planned for Starship landings. The report also mentions that the booster hot stage ring is expected to be jettisoned for the first 20 flights and will land 3 to 4 kilometers downrange. This temporary measure aims to reduce the booster's weight, facilitating more precise and controlled landings. Future booster iterations will feature an integrated lightweight hot stage ring, eliminating the need for jettisoning. Reuters reports that SpaceX is currently in discussions with US and Australian officials to facilitate the landing and recovery of one of its Starship rockets off Australia's coast. The news came just before the United States signed a $1 billion bilateral agreement with the Australian Space Agency. This agreement, known as the Technology Safeguards Agreement, now officially in effect, is designed to ensure that U.S. technology launched in Australia remains secure and under U.S. jurisdiction. This landmark agreement will facilitate up to 100 spacecraft launches in Australia over the next 10 years. As per Reuters, the SpaceX proposal involves launching a Starship rocket from the Starbase, landing it in the ocean off Australia's coast, and then recovering it on Australian soil. The details of the landing and recovery operations are still being negotiated, including logistical aspects and regulatory challenges related to bringing a recovered Starship booster into a foreign country. Sources suggest that these test landings could be an initial phase of a broader plan for SpaceX's future in Australia, which might include launching from an Australian facility or transitioning to land-based recoveries of Starship boosters, though these plans are still in the early stages. Now, let's come back to the developments at Starbase. Following the installation of engines inside Mega Bay 2, Ship 31, designated for Flight 6, was moved to the high bay, taking over Ship 30's previous position at the Tile Integration Station. The heat tiles on Ship 31 will soon be replaced with newer, stronger ones, featuring a secondary ablative material underneath, similar to Ship 30's configuration. Interestingly, a communications permit posted by SpaceX on June 21 indicates that Flight 7 will feature a Starship equipped with an advanced radio frequency system. This suggests that Ship 32, the successor to Ship 31, will not be used for Flight 7. Instead, Ship 33 is expected to be the vehicle for the seventh flight. The stacking of Starship 33, the first of the next-generation Block 2 vehicles, is progressing at the build site. The nose cone and payload bay sections of Ship 33 were stacked inside the high bay and moved into Mega Bay 2 on June 24. This past week, the forward dome section emerged from the Star Factory, was moved into Mega Bay 2, and joined with the nose cone and payload bay assembly. The remaining tank sections of Ship 33 are expected to be completed and assembled in the coming days. Block 2 ships feature significant design changes and system upgrades compared to their Block 1 predecessors. 
For a detailed overview of these upgrades, please refer to my previous videos, links are available in the description. Meanwhile, Booster 15 stacking operations continue inside the Mega Bay. The bottom liquid oxygen tank was stacked two weeks ago, and this past week, the forward dome of the booster was moved into the Mega Bay, marking the start of methane tank stacking. Once complete, the methane tank will be placed atop the oxygen tank to complete Booster 15. Now, let's discuss some of the latest updates from the world of science and technology. Japan-based company Astroscale has achieved a significant milestone in space sustainability with its active debris removal by Astroscale Japan mission. Launched on February 18 aboard a Rocket Lab Electron rocket, a DROS-J is designed to approach and study an old inactive rocket stage in orbit. The specific target of inspection is the H-2A upper stage, which was left behind following the launch of the GOES-SAT Earth Observation Satellite in 2009. The rocket stage, measuring approximately 11 meters in length and 4 meters in width, and weighing around 3 tons, poses a significant collision risk to operational satellites and future space missions. Over the past five months, the Adras J satellite has been navigating around and monitoring this rocket body. The company announced on Tuesday that on July 15 and 16, Adras J successfully performed the controlled fly around operations, capturing images of the upper stage rocket from various angles and under different lighting conditions, while maintaining a fixed distance of about 50 meters. These operations provided crucial data on the rocket body's condition and its tumbling behavior. This data is invaluable for developing techniques to capture and deorbit large debris objects in the future. The successful fly-around operations followed an earlier attempt in June, which was aborted due to an unexpected anomaly, demonstrating the spacecraft's robust collision avoidance capabilities. The next phase of the commercial removal of debris demonstration program will involve the launch of the Adras J-2 spacecraft, which aims to capture and deorbit the same upper stage rocket body. Adras J is Astroscale's second mission, following the end of life services by Astroscale Demonstration, ELSA D, mission, which launched in 2021. ELSA D tested rendezvous and capture technologies using a servicer and client spacecraft, though it faced challenges due to thruster failures on the servicer spacecraft. In 2026, Astroscale plans to expand its activities by capturing and removing two obsolete British satellites under the Cosmic Initiative. These missions represent a significant contribution to the advancement of technology for space debris removal, a crucial aspect of maintaining the sustainability of Earth's orbit. Boeing's Starliner spacecraft recently underwent a critical thruster test while docked at the International Space Station, as NASA explores options for the astronauts' return. The Starliner crewed flight test mission, carrying NASA astronauts Barry Wilmore and Suni Williams, was launched atop an Atlas V rocket from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida on June 5. However, during its journey to the ISS, the spacecraft encountered thruster malfunctions and helium leaks in its propulsion system. Five of the spacecraft's 28 reaction control system thrusters malfunctioned during the approach to the ISS, causing the spacecraft's computer to shut them down. Four of these thrusters were later restored, but one remains offline. Despite these issues, the spacecraft successfully docked with the ISS on June 6, allowing Wilmore and Williams to join the seven-member crew already aboard the station. However, the spacecraft issues have delayed the astronauts' return, which was initially planned for June 14. Since the anomaly, Boeing and NASA have been working diligently to address the problems. In the last few weeks, ground teams completed testing of a thruster on a test stand at White Sands, New Mexico, to replicate the thrust degradation that caused the thrusters to fail. Inspections of the thruster after the test revealed bulging in a Teflon seal in an oxidizer valve, which might restrict the flow of nitrogen to troxide propellant. Engineers are currently assessing whether the seal can withstand the stresses of undocking and the deorbit burn. Meanwhile, on the ISS, the Starliner team completed a docked hot fire test of the spacecraft's reaction control system thrusters this past week and monitored its helium system, which is used to push propellant into the thruster systems. The test involved the sequential firing of 27 RCS thrusters, and Boeing reported that all thrusters achieved peak thrust values while the helium system remained stable. Looking ahead, the Starliner team is preparing for additional simulations that will help determine the timing of the spacecraft's undocking and return to Earth. Although an official landing date has not been set, NASA is optimistic about the crew's return in August, pending further evaluations of the test results. Meanwhile, Boeing's quarterly report released this week revealed that the Starliner delays have cost the company $125 million so far. This brings Boeing's overall loss on the program to nearly $1.6 billion since 2016, primarily due to schedule delays and the need for additional work to resolve issues with the spacecraft. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates.
If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.